Today I want to discuss a little bit about the tool post. On the small ways, um, this standard tool post is useful but not as is it, as it could. Um, it's possible to mount basically only two cutters. Uh, for some operations, uh, two cutters is enough, so you could uh, easily rotate it and uh, change to another cutter. Um, but two cutters is not enough, basically not enough. Uh, to change them all the time, um, leveling them, um, it's a little bit difficult. Uh, I was uh, cutting the screws for uh, the D holder that I made in the in one of the previous videos, and it was nightmare. So I was need to change uh, four tools to cut the screws, and uh, that's just not working with the um, the small tool post. That's why I decide finally to invest a little bit more to the lathe and buy the multifix. Yes, it will be one more uh, multi-fix installation video. Um, let's have a look how it goes. And yes, for the multi-fix, you need quite a lot of holders for uh, tools. This one, not an original multi-fix. Um, it's some Chinese production. Uh, I stopped exactly on this model. Uh, why? Because it's the size. Uh, size is a little bit different compared to the to what we have in the line of the original multifixes. Yes, and of course pricing, but pricing pricing is important. So these are the size for the tool holders, uh, 1665. So I could use the cutters up to 16 millimeters on my small lathe. How good it will be and how good it is to use this tool, let's have a look. So all of the uh, holders that I bought, they are uh, D type, so for the normal cutters. And actually I could then use uh, whatever cutter I have for my original tool post with these uh, holders. I bought six of them. Should be enough for Every task that I have, I will mount almost all the tools that I'm using most often. And I will have like one holder for changing the tools. Let's have a look how to mount it. Usually in the big lathe, on the compound slide, you have the T-nut or place for the T-nut, this slot. And there, you just could use the big T-nut and mount the tool holder. On this small lathe, construction is a little bit different. So this post is the part of the compound slide and there is just the screw. This post size should be the same as the hole in this uh, holder, at least that's what I know, yes. It's it fits, it's a pretty tight fit, but that's exactly what I want to have. Here will be the locking mechanism. The arrow. And the nut, or the nut, the holding part. So it should be something like this, but I will need to align everything in the perfect way and then screw it down. Uh, to screw it down, I could use the original part as well, but it will be a little bit too much, I would say. So I will make some beautiful knot here. 
to hold the entire part. Makes sense? Yes, makes sense. I will align it uh, at the moment to use it already for this project. I will need to close the cassette a little bit. Something like that. Then with the indicator installed over here. I could do all other things. Now I will install some of the tools that I'm using most often and uh, align their height. The height alignment usually need to be made with the uh, front um, tapper, uh, but I will align with the tailstock. Basically, it's I know that the tailstock is uh, aligned pretty well with the front, so I'll, I will align the tools based on the tailstock at the moment. If I will see that it's not working very well, then of course, then of course I will remake it. I'll start with the chamfering tool. It's the new tool completely. I never used it before, but it's quite useful tool. The first one cutter done. Now I'm going with next. Next will be the cutter for that I'm using the most. Uh, it's for just normal cutting. So okay, over here. Should be a key. Second one done. Next, the cutter for uh, finish cuts. It's also done. Next one. Next one for threads. And the last one I will use for the uh, inner cutter. I could actually mount it even without this holder. But I will mount with it. Uh, let's have a look how it goes. Now all cutters ready and it's time to start with some cuts. I will do this through 
for the holder. Okay, M10 seems too big. We will rotate check manually. Now after the thread is done, I need to do some milling to make a head of screw. Um, as you can saw, I could not uh, actually do the uh, um, threading with the D of 10 millimeters on the lathe. Uh, the motor power is not enough. Um, 8 millimeters, yes, 10 millimeter, no. So I always need to do it manually, to rotate the lathe manually. Uh, but I like the results, so that still doesn't matter. Okay, now head. Now let's move a little bit more here. And let's go. Now I'm finished with milling, it's for 16 millimeter wrench, fits pretty well. So just a little bit of finishing, so I will need to go to the lace, cut this out, do the chamfer here and we'll try to do over here. That's what I get after just a little bit of machine, and let's make this tool post nicer because I didn't like how it looks at the moment. Another screw, a little bit of oil, and it goes.
And now I need to do just one thing, align this one more time. It could be done easier than I did before, without indicator as well. So I could catch just one to three block, put it somewhere to the shark and to the tool post. Like this. And actually, that's it. Now it's aligned almost perfectly. I really like this tool post. Uh, it helps a lot uh, compared to just regular one where you need to change the cutter every time. So it saves a lot of time. Super nice size for this lace. So I could use the tools up to 16 millimeters. Uh, here I have only 12 millimeters tools, but uh, it's just wider range of tools so sometimes uh, you could found you couldn't found the tool you need in the size of 12 millimeters for example and then i would i could easily use 16. and that will be it see you next time in my next video